Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel about aviation. As you know, aviation is a wide topic. It's a lot of different disciplines in aviation. And one of the discipline I really like and I really do, it's a skydiving. Today we are here in New Jersey, Skydive Cross Keys Airport. Let's check it out, what does it mean skydiving and uh, how you can join the Skydive family. Going ahead, I can tell you, it's pretty easy. In this video, I will try to explain you how you can start your skydiving, how you can progress in skydiving, how you can become a student and how you can get your first license. Me personally, I'm working on uh, license A right now. I have 19 jumps and I need six more jumps to be licensed as A license. Let's go. Okay guys, as I said before, we are at uh, Skydive Cross Keys and right here together with me, Pico, he's owner of the skydive and I have a few questions for him to give you more information about skydiving and how you can start. Hello Pico. Nice to meet you. Nice Thanks to meet for you coming too. out to our home. <laughs> so this is the place where people gather all together for jumping from the perfectly fine airplane. We call them that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be uh, amateurs or sportsmen or professionals. Uh, give us a little bit more information everybody can start jumping from you, scratch anybody can jump anybody. anybody can skydive what is the minimum requirements for first time jump we say that this sport is open to everybody we encourage everybody all walks of life ages um, to, to come here our requirements are that you need to be 18 years old under 250 pounds and in uh, reasonably good uh, health just to be able to make a landing you know so you're not gonna have broken bones or whatnot so any medical conditions or anything like that uh, we do we do uh, look into on a case-by-case -case basis but uh, it's pretty pretty easy to get most people jumping we've had people jumping on their 18th birthday and I think our oldest here was 104 or 102 years old so 104? we could yeah I think it was it might be 102 years old I don't want to I don't want to exaggerate so okay but I know we've done that <clears throat> But it is literally open to everybody. So if you if you have an adventurous side, you're you're so gonna, no exclusion you're gonna for people younger than 18 because my oldest daughter is 16. She's now and she cannot jump. So the reason for that is that we do have legal documents to sign here. We do have waivers. Um, we do have ID requirements. Oh, it's and for us with USPA, which is our governing body here, which we we, we adhere to all the USPA guidelines, um, we we do insist that you're 18 and over so you can sign your own waiver instead of having a uh, parent or guardian doing it for you. We, we prefer the, the individual to write their own waivers. Okay, I see. Crosskeys traffic, caravan departing runway 89er, be southeast departure, Crosskeys.
Looks like this guy attentions his better than PT6 now. Oh, the gear is way better. It's about 50% more horsepower. It was, Instead of yeah. 675, we've got about 900 on this one. I see. Because climb rate is much better than... Oh, yeah. Than it's, it's, it's ridiculously different. Like 1,500 feet per minute, easily. Oh, yeah. Uh, it'll probably pick up. How many jumps do you have? Oh... Never really logged them because I was always working here, but somewhere around 100. 100 jumps? Somewhere around there, yeah. By the time I, I was always flying, so I never really got the jump. And then uh, at some point I moved down the Caribbean. And then we just didn't jump much down there. What do you do usually use for tandems? 12.5? Uh, 13.5. 13.5? Yep. We stay consistent all the time. Okay. Yeah, just to make sure everybody understands this yep. time. Climb rate is amazing. And it's pretty hot day. Yeah, I mean these things have been game changers for skydiving. Free fall is traffic about four miles to the east of uh, your guys' airport heading westbound at 1600 feet. Types unknown. I'm not sure if you'd be on the advisory frequency if you want to reach out. Okay, free fall one, we copy traffic and we're uh, jumpers away at this time, so uh, try to raise them quick. Yeah, sounds good. It looks like he's descending towards cross keys. That's the uh, closest I've seen him there. Frontier 2327, turn right direct TV. Right turn direct TV, for Flight 2327. Cross keys traffic, please use caution. Scott having in at progress over cross keys. Please do not overfly cross keys airport. Parachutes over cross keys. All right, thank you. Yeah, free ball. Looks like he's descending into the airport there. Just with me. Okay, we're. Uh, Make a broadcast too, I'm pretty sure that's probably a pattern entry. Okay. Woohoo! Jumpers away! Free fall one, jumpers away descending. We'll be looking for that traffic. Free fall one makes he's about uh, two miles south east of the field now. Looks like he's entering right traffic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're on the nines today. So it's here 2327, I got nothing for you, sir. Contact Watch Center 132.05. 3205, you have a good day. Flight 2327. I knew I'd hit it. What is this? Hit the NTS. The negative torque sensor. Uh huh. It thinks you have an engine failure, so it feathers the prop on you automatically. Okay. I see. If you get going too fast and descent and powered idle, it, it'll do that for you. It's trying to help you. But I was looking for that traffic, looked away. I usually fly within about two two knots of uh, where that MTS will kick in. Traffic caravan, right base, runway nine across keys. Negative contact, keep it off. Cross keys, caravan, final runway nine across keys. on that one. Nice. It was the most crazy approach I ever seen. Oh, I can do better. I was having to hold back on account of that plane, but yeah, we can really hook them in. Unbelievable. Oh. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's great. This was my the craziest approach ever, ever I seen. It was like 4,000 feet per minute. Karaskis, it's an older drop zone. It's uh, established, I believe it was in 92 or 93, I'm not positive. And it is uh, famous for its proximity to Philadelphia. We're 14 nautical miles from uh, Philly. Mm -hmm. In fact, the uh, Class Bravo airspace around Philly has been cut out around us, so it would uh, uh, continue to operate. It's uh, back in its early days, it was one of the largest uh, drop zones in the country. Uh, when it came to tandem jumping, it was one of the uh, premier spots and one of the busiest uh, active tandem factories. So you start your jumping here? Yeah. Okay. And then, when? Uh, so I started to work for the previous owners, John Eddowes and Agnes Eddowes owned this place. They, they started it. And uh, I started to work for them as their pilot uh, in 2008. 2008. And, okay. uh, that's where I kind of cut my teeth in jump flying, at least. I was a pilot previously, uh, uh, numerous jobs beforehand, but came here because it was close to home and enjoyed skydiving. I did a, did a tandem and basically said, hey, do you, do you need a pilot? Because I kind of enjoyed the environment. And uh, he says, yeah. So I started working for him. And then fast forward a few, lots of twists and turns and, and uh, some, some different locations and jobs. But in 2016, we, we we bought it from them. Okay. So my wife Nadia and I now now operate the place where I really wanted to build a drop zone just like, and we're fortunate enough to to wear the shoes that uh, taught me how to do things. So we're fortunate to be here. How many planes do you have? We use two super vans. We've got uh, the Texas Turbine converted caravans. They're very quick. Uh, we do have a 182 available to to fill in the gaps, mm -hmm. especially used for our, our swoop clubs in the mornings and uh, hop and pops during the weekends when it's getting a little busy. Um, that's also our demo airplane when we go off site to do demos, that's usually what we use for that. But uh, between the three, we get pretty good lift capacity. And then uh, whenever we have an event or, or boogies or parties or whatever, we'll, we'll bring more in. So we've had four airplanes plus helicopters, steermans and, and everything else, we, we keep it. Let me show you the, some special features of uh, skydive aircraft because it's kind of additional modification here. Look at this. First of all, it has step. So they need to use this step if too many people, too many skydivers would like to fly like a formation. Some people hanging out. So they just step on, the, on this step and they hanging on this uh, rail over. The door, this is white cargo door and it's open with slider. So slider is going up and down. Uh, when you will jump with tandem master, he will be hanging like that. And you need to squeeze and make sure he can jump out with you. That's it. So I usually jump like that. Three, two, one. Some skydivers, they hanging out like this, for example. If they shoot somebody, so you, they have camera on a helmet and they shoot somebody jumping outside. And if it's a big formation, some people can be here. Some people, people can be here, like that. <laughs> and this is pretty cool inside. So it's pretty aesthetic, not like a business class, not even like economy class. This is uh, economy double minus, maybe triple minus. So everybody sit like that. We have seat belts here. We need to use seat belts up to 2,000 feet. After 2,000 feet, you just unbuckled. Just in case of emergency, you need to go out with your parachute. That's it. And I believe this plane can take up to 20 people, maybe less. 
cool. I like it too. So you will have great time today, man. I am really jealous because my first jump happens in 2004, 18 years ago, when I jumped first time from biplane and ton of two with round shoot. Then I jump with tandem, then I passed my AFF in 2005 and uh, I stopped skydiving for 17 years. And I just came back in this year. Hero comes back. Let's go! Okay guys, I would like to show you how you can start your skydive operations, how you can go inside the skydiving. This is pretty easy. You just need to show up in uh, any skydive zone in the skydive uh, area and ask for tandem. The tandem will be your first jump. And today I would like to show you an example how it works. And uh, my assistant will be my uh, permanent cameraman, Oleg. Oh, really? Yes, man. Give me your camera, please. And you're gonna go jump. Not like that. No. Let's go. No. Let's go to manifest and uh, we will talk to the manager and we will ask them to explain how it works. So, I have this gentleman. Okay. He's my cameraman. I would like to jump him tandem. Okay. That's what my do, first what time. do we need to do? I have to show him a video in the briefing room and okay. then I'll give him his waiver. I don't need it yet, but did you bring a photo ID with you? ID, driver license. Uh, yep, I have. There is not now, nor will there ever be, a perfect parachute system or packer, a perfect airplane or pilot, a perfect parachute center or instructor, or for that matter, a perfect student. Let's go do it. You Easy. got your briefing? How was that? I think it uh, will be good. What do you did to learn? Uh, so you I have, know a, lot about of, you have a lot of responsibilities. You cannot see you the skydive operations. You cannot uh, have any questions to them, financial or, and you can be dead or injured. Uh, if I if I dead, uh, it's my problem. Okay, that's right. Continue. So there's lines on here that say witness. You can leave those blank. I'll sign those when you're done. Um, and then anytime you print your name, it just has to match your ID first and last. And don't use him as your emergency contact, okay? Okay. Thank you. And then... Have you skydived before? No. No? You excited? I'm normal. Normal? Normal. Fair He's normal. Nobody's normal here. <laughs> yeah, I That's think true. so. <laughs> I have titanium in my head. I always normal. 374, it's a jump with a photo and video. Yes. My name is Jimmy. My name is Oleg. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We're going to be jumping together. Okay. No. Safe? Is it safe? safe? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We don't use that word here. Okay. Definitely not safe yet. There she is. You can let go. You good? Amateur. That's it. You can be really good at being amateur. Looking good, man. Let's do a nice video. Of course. All right, Oleg. How we doing today, man? I'm okay. So here, welcome to Scottish Coral Skis. Tell everybody what's about to happen right now. We're all jumping. That's all right, man. How you feel? I'm okay. Are you ready for this? Yes, of course. Are you sure? Yes. All right, I don't know. <laughs> I like I'm it. ready. So is there anything you'd like to say before we get on this plane and jump out? No, it's my first time. First time? Let's go show everybody how this is done. I'll see you in the sky. Yeah.
Zero narrows. Stepan, when was your first jump? It was the day before yesterday. It was great. And what is your feeling right now after two days? I'm just right ready for another jump. Okay, sounds good. Yeah! Woo! Ah, it's way got, cool. How you doing? Good experience. I am fine. That was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it. All right. So, how are you feeling? Nice. Like... Nice. Did you do it Good again? experience. Yeah? It was amazing. Right on, I man. I like it. You're Thank you so now. much. That's Thank you so Scott much. Scott Avkoski. Let's go do it! One more time! Again? Yes! One! Now! Let's do it! Let's do it! Congratulations, man! Nice! It was amazing! Really? I like it! You seriously? Yes. Just kidding! Nice! Very nice! Wow! I'm happy! Congratulations, man! Welcome, Thank you, man! Thank welcome, you, man! Welcome to my club! Thank you, man! <laughs> I like it! Nice! I like it. It is. Hi, Esteban. <laughs> Namaste. Yamaste. <laughs> Alright, here you go for YouTube. Oh, nice. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations, man. Thank you so much. I like it. Do you have any some scheduled events for the year? Like summer camps or I don't know. Almost every weekend at this drop zone has something going on. Um, if it's not a boogie, it's a camp or yeah, skills camps, lots of those. Um, some classes. Some... Exactly. Um, 
everything from, from canopy classes to angle flying to wingsuits to you name it, it's, it's all happening here just about every weekend. Go to the website and check it out on the Skydive Cross Keys, right? That's correct. And that's the best way to find the schedules because if there's any changes, any updates, that's where it's done. Facebook and Instagram are really hot spots. I know uh, Nadia does a lot of uh, social media work on it. So we do encourage everyone to check us out on those. Okay, let's see the First jump is always with somebody, right? Because I encourage a lot of people to start skydiving and everybody asks me, I cannot do that because I'm on my own. I said, no, you're not on your own. It's you not have required. a tandem master with yeah. you. So. so it's not required. We do two different programs. We have AFP and AFF. AFP uh, is a, a advanced free fall progression. It comes from uh, three tandem skydives and then we put you through a classroom and uh, get you the, the guidance to go for and then you jump with an individual you know in free fall as an instructor alongside you in your own you know your own free fall. Uh, we do also offer AFF which is advanced free fall and that is a first time jump. You tandem. get your own rig. Nope, no, no tandems. You no don't tandem. you do not need to do a tandem. We don't encourage it this way, but it is off, uh, offered. Uh, the difference is we put you out with two instructors on your first refall. You go through your, your ground school and all your, your classroom uh, requirements first, and then uh, we put you out in free fall with two, two instructors to guarantee you know, you're stable and they can, they can work you around a little and bit. And these two instructors hold Correct. the body until the body is stable in the air, Correct. right? Yep. So if anything happens, they will help. They'll stabilize you, right sure you, get your belly down, and, safe. and be close enough to deploy a parachute if you're, you know, unwilling or unable. So. But landing will be on his own. That so is correct. Student, once student once the canopy is open, you are on your own. We do uh, put a radio on you so we can communicate with you uh, by radio. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do teach everything for for the fault if that radio was not to work. We teach you with everything you needed to know to, to not need any cues. So, uh, how long this program? So it's gonna. How many jumps I need to go through to be uh, like a solo? So with the AFP, with the tandem uh, workings, it's, it's uh, three tandems and then you'll go into a, a classroom environment and then start uh, with your own rig on your own back. Uh, hmm. With the AFF, it is a, it's probably a longer ground school to make sure you got it right, but uh, anywhere from five to six, eight hours or so, depending on the, the learning you know, capacity of the student then uh, that dictates how long you know, your classroom time is going to be. But a pretty good full day of classroom time, and uh, you're about ready to go. And it's eight jumps, as I remember. So it's eight levels? Yes, yes. So usually by about your seventh or eighth jump, you're ready to solo. And at, the, at that point, we call it a self-supervised solo. You're not licensed yet, but um, you're able to recognize faults in your own gear, do your own gear inspections, gather yourself up, look at the winds. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should be able to exit the aircraft on your own and land safely on your own. Uh, from that point, we encourage coach diving, uh, where you've got some mentors teaching you the ins and outs, a little beyond, and then you work towards your 25 jumps, which is needed for a license, so. So 25 so, jumps and I will have a license. What this allow me to do? So an A license really gives you the ability to start jumping with your friends and learn more. Uh, it's just like a pilot uh, license. I know you're familiar with it. I know when I got my pilot's license, they said, hey, this is your license to learn. And that's exactly how we treat it here too. An A license allows you to um, jump with your friends, okay. jump with mentors, jump with people a lot more experience and basically uh, uh, give yourself a lot more broad spectrum of you know, what you're immersing yourself in. Uh, everywhere from you know, learning on your belly and doing some, some, uh, some RW work to uh, your free flying. Can I start the like formation flight with somebody? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we encourage it very quickly. Um, mostly because the organizers that we have here are really top-notch and they know how to recognize uh, skill levels and, and they really get people to push their limits and, and learn more. This is what I wanted to say. It's uh, like in aviation when you don't have any limits. It's in the skydiving the same. You don't have any limits. When you start flying in the belly on the free fly, the next level you can jump and uh, fall down on the, on the back. Then you can be in a seat position, then you can be on the head down position, then you can start doing formation, like formation with two people, three people, four people, 
up to I don't know how many like uh, 160. We've, we have seen 120 here. So. Yeah, 120 mm -hmm. people, 160 people. World world record I believe is 200 something, something like uh, that. In the U.S., I believe they're going for 400 in Thailand. So 400. It's, yeah, uh, it's yeah. a bunch. So and if you get on board with uh, solo jump or formation flying, you can always go to how they call it. Uh, canopy, canopy, yep. uh, aerobatic or something like yep. that. Yep, there's lots of canopy skills. Uh, we've got some amazing <laughs> Boogie, instructors here. Water, planing. Oh, the swoop competitions. Swoop competitions, mm -hmm. something like that. And so we're lucky we do have a pond here, so we do get some of that as well. Okay, cool. After license A, you can have license B, C, and D, as I, as Correct. I understand, right? So it's like four different licenses. like. Private instrument, commercial, ATP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's basically the truth of it. And it's amazing what some of them will open up the doors for you. I mean, once you're a D-licensed individual, you're pretty much uh, capable of starting to grab uh, instructor ratings and, and examiner ratings beyond that point. That's, uh, and again, we encourage it. That's what keeps the sport moving along. So I believe all instructors here, they start from uh, scratch as everybody. So they start from AFF, then go to license Every ABCD. instructor here had his first jump somewhere. So. Somewhere, okay, at some point. Cool. One of the questions uh, people really ask is, uh, how expensive is that? How much is the first jump? Yeah, I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> it changes. Uh, I know this year we've had fuel problems and everything else where, where the numbers have gone up and down a little bit. But uh, in general, I say it's around $250. It depends on the day, the weekend, or whatnot. So It's for tandem? For a tandem. Okay. Uh, and our, our jump prices are, have been going up and down a little bit with the fuel prices as well. Mm -hmm. They used to be $26. They're elevated a little bit right now, but as soon as the fuel prices come down, they'll be, they'll be back down. So as a sportsman, I will pay like 25 20 Right now, I think it's about 30 but 30. Uh, it, it, should, it should go down, hopefully. That's where we're cool. waiting for our fresh load of fuel to see what happens. Excellent. <clears throat> So I wish you the best. This is really nice and uh, I appreciate it. you've been a been a good guest. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I I like the atmosphere, you know. When you show up in a new in a new place, uh, you can feel it like in the air. So this atmosphere we, here is really We good. try really hard not to be a tandem factory. Um, obviously that's where the money's at. But we really try to culture this environment for the fun jumpers. Um, it's what brought me here. That's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. I like to, you know, engage with all of the people here, their license and customers, and that's the life beat. That's the heartbeat of the place. It's, uh, it's not the tandems. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we, we really do try to invest in the culture here more no, than anything else. No, it's a really great environment. So we don't kick everybody out when the sun sets. You just sets. need to add coffee here. I like that idea, actually. Nadia, Nadia would do that. Yeah, we need coffee here. <laughs> I'm start struggling on from coffee. I'll put more on her plate, too. <laughs> okay, and uh, the last maybe but not least question, you are a pilot, right? Yes. And my YouTube channel is about aviators and aviation and pilots and people. So what is your personal story behind this? So I happened to grow up in a household where aviation was a, a pretty good center point. My father was a uh, military pilot and then turned uh, airline pilot. He worked for American Airlines and um, managed to have enjoy aviation enough to where he always had a toy at home too. Okay. Um, always had a personal plane, as far as I can remember. And what was neat about his choice in airplanes is that they were never normal. There was always something different about it. We never had a Cessna, never had a, uh, you know, a Bonanza or anything. We had a biplane, we had an old Great Lakes, an old French Stomp airplane, uh, and then he got the T6 over time. But we never had anything normal, it was always tail draggers. So when I grew up, that's what I knew. And uh, I knew quickly on that, that that's more fun than, than flying straight and level or going places. So out of four children, I'm the only one that got a pilot's license and uh, kind of stuck to it and enjoyed it. And it's taken me a lot of places. So early on, I was a tradesman. I used to swing hammers, build homes, and I did uh, very well with it. I had a good job, but at some point in my 20s, I realized my back was hurting, my aches and pains were growing, and I said, let's, uh, let's go Let's go explore this air, airplane stuff. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I had a commercial pilot's license and moved out west. I flew Twin Otters in Vegas and started working for a little airline out there. And then uh, kind of back and forth between the trades and flying a little bit, but uh, always kept flying as a, as a hobby. I always thought it would be a hobby. Never thought I'd make money with it. Then um, at some point, I came here, I did a tandem skydive and asked if they needed a job, <laughs> if, they needed a, if they had a job for me, and they said yes. 
So that's kind of how I got involved with the skydiving. Uh, how old was you at this time? When I took over, uh, when I started flying at Cross Keys, I think I was just shy of 30 years old, 20, 29, I think. But leading until that, I did, uh, all my time building was, was flying old planes and warbirds and, and aerobatic stuff with the biplanes. Um, did a lot of air-to-air -air photos with uh, the magazines, doing formation work to get the, the cover shots and everything for that. That's, that's how I built my time. We'd go to air shows in the, in the SNJ, and Dad would fly to show, and I'd, I'd take it out, sunset for the golden hours, and, and go take the, uh, the photographers up. So I was probably one of the few kids in my early, early 20s flying a T6 around next to Hawker Hurricanes and Catalinas and everything else. I don't know how many different photo shoots we've done, but we've got lots of 8x10s from all of them. Nice. <laughs> Quite a collection. But yeah, it was always hobby flying for me. And then finally... And you're uh, still flying right now? Yeah, absolutely. So because I, ju I just flew with you on this plane, so I know for sure you can fly these. Birds. I don't fly the caravans nearly as much anymore. We, we have pilots for that. I'm a huge fan of paying it forward. You know, there's a lot of people cutting their teeth in here and getting their, their, their careers started. Mm -hmm. This is a good place for them. It's very demanding here at Cross Keys, so if you can survive here, you can, you can work anywhere as far as skydiving goes. And I saw you have a lot of uh, interesting toys in your hangar. What do you have right now? Uh, we do have a Piper Cub, so my kids can learn how to fly. Uh, we do have a Cap 10B. It's a former French Connection airplane that was uh, a Danielle's from the team. It's a lot of history in there. It's kind of a, a flying a wood, museum. Wood one, right? Yeah, it's all wood. Uh, we do have the 182 for uh, the jump planes, and uh, my father has bestowed me his SNJ. So the Texan is a. Uh, that's a, that's a gas burner for us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do have a Cheyenne that we use for, for moving around. For family fun flight. It is a good one for that. <laughs> oh, okay, I got you. Okay, man, I'm really happy no, to be I'm here. No, i glad you guys came. Thank you so much for this short interview, and I wish you the best. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you so it's much. great. This is how it works. So the sky is open for everybody. All you need is just your wishes and time. That's it.